We are talking all things running a live workshop and this week we are talking about the content that you deliver during the workshop. Hi, I'm Sam Nordberg. Welcome to this week's mini training and we're talking all things live workshops. You see, it's very different running a face-to-face -face workshop or event, especially a, like an informative event, an educational event, than it is to running anything online, your blog or your vlog or whatever else. Because people are actually there in real life. I know it happens, scary but true. The thing is, a live workshop is really not about you. It's about them. What that means then is a very small portion of your live workshop is about the content. A large portion of a live workshop is about everything else that happens. Today, we're just going to be talking about your content. Now, really, it is only a very small portion. Your live event should not be you lecturing all day. If you've got an eight hour event, you take out your breaks, you take out your activity points, you take out your times for discussion, you take out everything else, you're maybe presenting content for two to three hours, maybe, but it's really not very long. You see, a lot of that time, a lot of that content is produced in other ways. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is the content you produce for a live workshop needs to be short, sweet, and to the point. Because what I'm going to take you through over the next couple of videos then is the other stuff you need to be doing in the workshop that's really not about your content. This is not about someone sitting in a university lecture theater and just listening for hours on end. This is about them engaging in a way that helps them learn better. And so realistically, it's not all about you. When you're preparing your content for a live workshop, I want you to make sure you deliver content still in small bite-sized pieces. So just like I teach you for online courses, teeny, 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 tiny little chunks, you're gonna do the same. Break the content down for the day into teeny bite-sized bits, bits where you can sit down and just learn about a certain thing. Then what that allows you to do is build in the activity and the discussion for that same teeny, teeny, tiny bit. This allows students to deal with little bits of information at a time and not get overwhelmed. It allows you to take regular breaks without interrupting the flow of information. It allows you to engage your audience and not overwhelm them and not bore them with huge bits of information. Your stuff needs to be small, really, really small. Because if someone's coming to a live event, they could have just learned the content online, right? They could have just watched one of your videos or read someone's blog. They could have just picked up the content elsewhere. If they're coming to a workshop, a live event, it's because they want other things. It's because they want you, right? They want Q&A. It's because they want to meet people. They want networking. It's because they want all this other stuff. If they just wanted the content, they would have gone online. Now, that's not to say your live workshop should not have great content. Build good content, but keep it short and keep it sweet. Keep it really, really short, like teeny tiny little bits that allows you to do other stuff in between. By all means, give them extra content, right? Give them links to videos, give them workbooks, give them stuff they can take away. But on the day, you want to make sure your stuff is the smallest portion of the day, as strange as that sounds. So jump in the comments block below and I want to hear from you. So I want to know if you've been to an event where you felt overwhelmed by the information and I want you to tell me why. I want you to tell me if you've been to an event where you were underwhelmed by the information and I want you to tell me why. Because you analyzing someone else's live event is actually a really good way to think about running your own live event.